All right, everybody, the purpose of this video is to help you set up your Yelp for business. Um, a lot of people are afraid to list on Yelp. Uh, and in fact, uh, I have some information about this uh, in a blog that I wrote that's accompanying this video. I would highly recommend that you also read that if you're watching this on YouTube. Please just scroll down to the description. It'll be the first link that you see to accompany it. Um, there's a lot of information uh, that can ease your mind in one way and then also give you warnings about Yelp. But as a business owner, this is one place that you really have to have yourself listed. And I'm going to show you how to get your listing set up and to make sure that you maximize that listing. But don't forget, please read the accompanying blog because there are some important information that you need to know about working with Yelp. All right, we're going to start by clicking on, uh, we're going to head to business.yelp.com. Then we're going to click on manage my free listing. All right, looks like I was already starting to set up a listing here, but I'm going to actually change this over to a new listing. So change business and we're going to look for a business name and we're going to say R in comma notary and not found. So I'm going to say add to Yelp for free. It's going to ask for a business phone number. I'm going to use my cellular phone so that I can get a text message to verify my listing. It asked me if I want to text a link to download the mobile app. I will tell you I'm not a fan of the mobile app, uh, so I don't want it. I'd rather work with email. You can decide if you want to, but I'll tell you you're not going to get any more business using the app. And today we already have 100,000 apps going off on our phones anyway. So I'm going to say continue from here. And it's going to ask me my website so i'm going to put in i always use the https to go along with my website to show people that my website is secure all right and it's going to ask me my business category sometimes you have to be patient with it um, in my particular industry it says notaries and not notary so i'm going to say notaries now if you are setting this up for another type of business you would want to put everything that's applicable uh, that you can legally put in our industry the only thing that we can put as notaries is notary all right and then what is your business address uh, i'm going to actually use our company post office box and then once i have that address uh, written in there. I'm going to double check it to make sure that it's correct. And then I'm going to select that my business has four locations or less. If you have more, go ahead and select that. But most small business owners have four locations or less. And it's going to say it's working on creating our business page. Now there's a ways for you to get uh, to begin the verification process. Um, they will have to wait a few days for the Yelp team to review your information, but I'm actually going to receive uh, just choose to receive a text message at my phone number that I provided there. All right, and here we go. Now the purpose of me showing you how to set up your listing is to show you how to maximize your listing and not pay Yelp for things again I wrote a blog article about this. And I want to make sure that you understand that setting up a Yelp listing is basically inviting people to try to sell you things that you don't need. Um, they're going to give you this offer here. Sometimes it'll say expires within one hour and 59 minutes. Please forego their $300 credit if you have not read the accompanying blog article. Um, it is okay because once you sign up for that $300 credit, they're going to try to lock you into something where you're paying money after that $300 credit goes. And I'll tell you that $300 credit goes really fast. If you read my blog article, it's a big warning about that. All right, so we're going to say decline offer. <clears throat> and they're going to start trying to give you all kinds of things. Please just continue to decline offers until you get into setting up your business. All right, very first thing that we have to do is set up our business hours. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna mark myself as 24 hours, Monday through Friday. Um, Yelp does have this, you have to individually select. It, please don't mark your business 24 hours unless you're truly 24 hours. This is just a training video. So I'm just going in here to mark those 24 hours uh, for the sake of getting through the video. I'm gonna mark myself closed on Saturday and Sunday. 
Please note that it's important that you set up your business hours correctly. Um, you will make your customers angry if you are advertising hours that you don't actually service. Now we're going to say save and continue. It's going to ask you to put in uh, the services that you provide. Again, for the sake of this video, please don't miss anything that they offer you. Um, I'm just going to select uh, two items for now, but you will want to go through uh, whether you're a notary or whatever service kind of provider you are and select everything that's actually applicable to you so that it helps maximize those keywords in your listing. Now, the next step that we come to is what makes your business unique, okay? For the sake of the training of this video, I'm just going to put my business is very unique. Now, you want to fill out this section. You get 1,473 characters. Um, I'm not promising you that this is going to help with SEO of your listing because uh, Yelp has things on lockdown. Please make sure to read the accompanying article. But you do want to maximize making sure that you're using keywords, for instance, um, I would say things about Phoenix, Arizona, I would say things about working as a notary serving my local area, but using keywords that my users might be looking for when they're looking for the listing. Once you filled out your specialties it's going to ask you for your service area, this is really important if you work from home. Most mobile notaries work from their house. They don't work at an office or you might have a business address that's in a uh, UPS store like I do. And you're going to have a choice between hiding your business address or showing your business address. I actually want to hide, but I have to put in a service area first. This is actually something that a lot of business owners miss when they're setting up their service area. Some people will come right in and say, you know what, I serve as Phoenix. Well, I actually service way more than Phoenix, okay? I operate out of 85020, so I definitely want to get my zip code in there, uh, even though it's going to kind of be double dipping with Phoenix and then Phoenix 85020. But then I want to expand that service area. So I also serve as Glendale, Arizona. And you're going to watch that map over here get larger and larger. I also serve as Scottsdale. And I don't really service any of these areas, even though that gets a little high, uh, higher up there. So I'm going to work on areas like uh, Tempe, Arizona. I like to consider myself servicing all of Maricopa County. And even though it's double dipping a little bit, it's giving me a, a larger service area there. Now I'm not allowed to service anymore, so I've gotten some really important areas in here that I want to be known for, and I can't add any more. So I'm going to say, now have my business address. So it'll only show customers my service area. And we're going to say save and continue. All right. Now this is the part where you can add uh, add photos to your business. A lot of people skip this section right mm -hmm. here. Um, you know, I recommend getting on Canva and I use Instagram size uh, uh, posts. So I'm going to say canva.com. I'll just make one really quick to show you how easy this is. Uh, you're going to just go into Canva. If you have the ability to get in there, you're going to say create a design. You're going to say Instagram post square. They already have a lot of things set up for you. I'm going to turn this kind of bright colored so it would pop out to any users that are looking and I'm going to say text and I'm going to say now this is just a test photo um, you can put whatever you want this is actually just showing you how to get the photo up in there and make this blue which is our company colors, that blue and gold. Make sure I spelled it correctly. Download. And then I'm going to add that first photo here. Say save and continue. Now you can put your phone number or a message to the potential onlookers, but at least you have a photo in there. 
Now they want to capture that phone number again, but you don't really have to put in. That's if you want to download the app. I'm going to skip right over that. Again, the app um, doesn't really help you for anything. Now they make it pretty clear. Their website's pretty simple, even though it's pretty powerful. Um, and a lot of notaries or biz, small business owners stop right here. It says your setup isn't done yet. You can come back anytime to finish setup. So I'm going to say, let's, let's, uh, let's continue on setting up our listing here. Click on this button that says continue for upgrades. And this is where we need to make some things. Now they're going to send you an email asking you to verify your email address. I'm actually not going to do that process at the moment uh, because this is a training video and I actually don't really want this listing. You're going to see this page upgrades here and it's going to ask you, do you want these things for a dollar per day? These are actually really ridiculous to ask somebody that's listing on your site to pay for these things. I understand that they need to make money, but they're actually making, uh, I think on my blog article, what the research showed is that they're $2.10 billion and 90% of that or more comes from advertising. Um, people like myself and you paying in. Um, we, I actually own a directory and I would never charge people to uh, put a logo up or any photos or business highlights. Um, I'm just lucky that they list in my directory. Um, so that's just a personal opinion, but these won't get you any higher in the rankings. Uh, so there's no point in having them if it's, if it's going to. The remove competitor ads, I would say, uh, read my blog article, you don't need this either. Okay, so we're going to remove everything from that uh, and we're going to say that we don't want any of those things. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to come straight to business highlights. We're going to take a look and see if there's anything under business highlights that we would actually want to do. And because they're going to charge us no uh, portfolio let's take a look here. Now. There may be certain businesses that would want to add a portfolio, uh, especially if you're doing something that uh, you know involves building or artwork or photography. That might be a good thing, but for two dollars a day, I would say just link out to your website. Now we're going to go to business information. We did handle all of this when we were setting up our listing, uh, but we want to just scroll here to make sure that we haven't missed anything because they didn't make this apparent apparent to us when we were when we were doing things. So I've already gone over my categories and services. I've already added a photo there. Slideshow is going to cost me money. Um, now amenities and more. This is something that I see a lot of business owners missing as well. Um, is the business open to all? Yes, people like to see that. Diversity, um, I'm LGBTQ owned, so I would like to select that. Um, that also gets you support from your own local community as well. A lot of people look for businesses that are owned uh, within their own communities. Um, for right now, health and safety, since we're so far uh, past COVID, um, I recommend not filling out this information here unless you maybe you work in a healthcare, um, but this was added during COVID, so you may want to just skip that now and have that conversation with your customers. Um, you're going to choose if you accept any of these forms of payment. I highly recommend mobile businesses and small business owners to be able to accept Android, uh, Apple Pay, credit cards, cryptocurrency. That's a whole different conversation. Um, depends on what kind of business you're in and how much you want to play with your money. Um, don't uh, unless you're a restaurant, you're not going to be offering waitlist reservations, um, services, offer online ordering. This uh, this is only for restaurants, really. Military discount. That's definitely something that I offer. And unless you actually offer flower deliveries, don't add that in. So you're going to fill out all those sections there, and they do make a difference when people are searching. Now, your hours of operation are important, but if you're planning on taking off holidays or you have any times that you're going to be closed, one of the beauties of owning a small business is sometimes, especially if you work from home and you service those local areas that you can block out time. If your calendar is full and you want people to fill up your calendar, that's one thing, but if you're going to be closed on Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve or you know even Valentine's Day, mark your special hours so that people know when you're closed so that they're not frustrated with your business always being uh, not available when you need them or when they need you. Uh, now, I added in a specialties here and I did advise you to put in more 
one other thing that I see, two other things that I see people missing are the history of your company. And even if you're brand new and it's your first year in business, sometimes your local community will rally around you and, and help you and be like, wow, okay, they started their business this year and tell your customers, I came up with this really great idea. I wanted to service the uh, city of Phoenix better with better services and here's what I can offer you. You don't wanna miss this area, okay? Then you also wanna add your intro. Now, I think it's very important for you to add a photograph of yourself um, and you wanna make sure that you uh, put a nice bio in, thousand characters or less, tell people about your education, tell people about your work history, tell people why you went into business for yourself. Use as much of that thousand characters as you can. People like to support businesses when they feel like they know the owner, okay? I have learned this over the years. I thought it would be easier to put on a logo. It's not. People really wanna know the business owner and that's why Yelp has the meet the business owner section. Be proud of yourself for even owning a business and fill out this section. All right. And of course, call to action is something that you have to pay for as well as business highlights. Once you have done all of these, your business listing will be set up. Um, you will need to verify your email and then it will take a few days for Yelp to go in and uh, try to um, verify your listing. Now you're gonna get a phone call from a rep following setting up your Yelp listing. And I want to advise you to please read my blog article because there are some things about Yelp that you really need to understand. Um, the, the things that they're trying to sell you don't always work and there's more information to the story. So again, read the description in this video um, for the blog that's attached and make sure that you are aware. Thank you so much for letting me help you set up your Yelp listing. And uh, I look forward to seeing lots more small business owners on Yelp, but not actually paying Yelp to list there.